Welcome to part two of my review of the top 10 new features in the summer release of Photoshop 2025. I discussed the first five features last week. Here they are, by the way. And now today in this video, I'm discussing the second group of five in the order they were released. Plus, I include star ratings so you have a sense for whether they rock or if they need a little more work. And be sure to watch till the end. The last feature is my favorite. Right away, we have a very promising new feature that first appeared in Photoshop 26.8 back in June of this year, and that is dynamic text, which purports to automatically copy fit text inside of its frame. So I'll start with some point text, could just as easily be paragraph text, by the way. You wanna locate your contextual taskbar and click on this T with the lightning bolt, and that will automatically scale each line of type so that the width of the object is uniform. Now I'll switch Switch to the type tool and I'll click inside the type at which point you can see that we have this comical disparity between the size of the frame and its contents which is absolutely bizarre given that we're talking about copy fitting notice that things are tight right here the alignment of the text is tight inside the frame but then when I release the frame changes to a different size so we have a little bit of extra room on the left quite a bit of extra room on the right changing the alignment setting doesn't matter by the way and this is true for a lot of common formatting options here inside the properties panel or elsewhere they're just not compatible with dynamic text but adobe did not take the time to dim those incompatible objects gray them out in other words so we're largely on our own isn't that nice so anyway i'm gonna bring up some guides just so we can pretend we want exacting results i'll click inside this object and drag this left frame over it works beautifully snaps into place drag the right handle over it does not snap into place and it actually messes up the alignment of the left edge which is you know inconsequential because it wasn't accurate anyway notice what i'm talking about i'll press the escape key and then switch to the move tool and i'll zoom in and you can see photoshop is aware of the size of this object notice the bounding box is a match so i'll go and drag it so it snaps into alignment with the left guide right there and then i'll zoom back out press the t key to switch back to the type tool click inside the object and then drag the bottom right handle is what i recommend based on my experience and that way even though the frame will just snap to some other size it's totally not indicative of what's going on at least you have a live preview so you can eyeball things now notice composition reference will change from being on one line to the two words being on two different lines and that's great that's exactly what you want you want that kind of copy fitting that's awesome and you have common sense options that are available to you. For example, you can divide two words by entering a carriage return. However, other common sense things don't work. I'll go ahead and select this line of type right here. I wanna move it down with respect to the top line. And so you would think, just change the letting value. Of course, it's available. After all, I can select it and raise it from 32 points to 100. But even though it's not dimmed, it doesn't work. Thank you very much, Adobe. And so what you have to know is that we have a handful of dynamic text options right here. This one blocked, don't worry about it. It just turns the feature on and off. But we do have word spacing and we have line spacing as well. Problem is, if I take this down to zero, notice that it affects all the lines of type uniformly, whether they're selected or not. So I have to basically satisfy myself with taking this value to 35%, which works well enough. And then I'll drag this top edge down like so and accept the changes. And so I would love nothing more than to tell you, because I am excited about this feature, that it deserves something like, you know, four or five stars. But the truth of the matter is it's not even A for effort. It's like C for effort, D for implementation, which is why I'm going with two and a half. And by the way, if you're appreciating this candid overview from a person who does not work for Adobe, but has been using Photoshop since day one back in 1990, then take a moment to subscribe and turn on notifications. Next, we have what I'm calling improved cloud masks, which occurred in 
in version 26.8 back in June once again with very little fanfare and yet it makes a huge difference. And so I've got this stock image from the Dreamstime image library, link in the description. And so imagine what I wanna do is mask away the background. I just wanna keep everything that's wrought iron gate and get rid of everything that's not which is a big ask, I think, but I do have a couple of AI enhanced tools, select subject and remove background. They're actually the exact same command. It's just that one returns a selection outline and the other returns a layer mask. And so I'll click remove background and a moment later, it completely fails. That's because it's employing AI, as I said, but it's using a very small data set that has been installed with your version of Photoshop on your system, etc. Same as my system. However, if you want to expand that data set tremendously, by the way, go to the edit menu. That's going to be the Photoshop menu on the Mac. Drop down to the preferences command and then choose image processing. Do it now. And what you want to do is change this very first setting from device, which says quicker. It's not really any quicker to to cloud. It's just that cloud does require a live internet connection, which makes you think that it, it's going to upload the image to Adobe. That's not going to happen, by the way. Don't worry about that. Instead, you're just downloading a bigger data set, a much, much bigger data set that's available in the cloud and has been updated over time, at which point I'll go ahead and click OK. Now, I want you to see very briefly that device, that device setting has not been updated at all. It's the exact same thing. It works exactly the same, that is, in 2024 and 2025. Whereas you can switch to cloud in 2024. You've been able to do that since 2022, I believe. But it doesn't make much of a difference where this particular image is concerned. It just masks away the top left and top right corners, and that's it. Whereas, check this out. If I were to, here inside Photoshop 2025, obviously click remove background, then there's gonna be a progress bar, which is gonna take another second. But I think the results are well worth that small weight. I did not speed that up, by the way, and yet I was able to mask away that background, which absolutely sets my brain on fire. Notice if I zoom in here, I have masked away these tiny gaps inside the hinges, and I've got very smooth results as well and so we end up with just this absolutely great looking image again that is a function of 2025 cloud setting version 26.8 and later and so it's very tempting to give this thing five stars based on what we just saw thing is it doesn't always work that well especially if the image involves hair it, 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 it still requires some refinement. And so I'm gonna give this a more realistic and I think accurate four stars. Hey, real quick, in addition to all this other stuff, one of those in-between releases, Photoshop 26.8, introduced support for two new file formats, AVIF or AVIF if you prefer, and JPEG XL. These formats are a big deal, but they're also a little bit technical, which is why I discuss them at length at my Patreon, which is patreon.com slash deeknow. And now back to part two of the 10 new features in the summer release of Photoshop 2025. Now we're jumping forward to Photoshop 26.9, which came out in July and introduced us to select and remove, which means you can select an area and apply remove technology as opposed to painting directly with the remove tool, although that experience has been enhanced as well. So let's take a look at that. I'll go ahead and zoom in on this guy once again from the Dreams Time Library, and he looks almost like he's been masked doesn't he? But it's just that there's a blue sleeve in the background and we have some highlights that are showing up over here. Actually, I think there's a placard or something. And bless his heart, he's smoking. That's no good. So I'll go ahead and switch over to the remove tool right here. And then notice these checkboxes. You definitely want to sample all layers. And I want to turn remove after each stroke off because I don't want to paint and remove incessantly and I'll click on create new layer, which is a new function by the way. So it's going to create a new layer for you automatically. I have mode set to let's say auto. 
So it may or may not employ generative AI. And now I'll just go ahead and paint this cigarette like so, just in little increments and I can paint the whole thing away and now I'll press the enter key in order to apply remove and it may be using generative AI if you see a progress bar it possibly is and now the cigarette is gone and it's weird that he's pinching his fingers but you know it just might be a nervous thing who knows now I'm gonna go ahead and paint away this region right here reduce the size of my brush a little bit paint around his hair and then paint right there let's say and i'll press the enter key once again and i get a progress bar probably indicating that i'm applying some worry-free ai because after all it no longer costs any credits i do end up with two separate layers however one each because i have this checkbox turned on and so you may just want to go ahead and merge them together and maybe i would Rename this layer remove, although there's really no reason to do that at this point. All right, now let's say what I want to do is get rid of the bicyclist and this woman right here. I could paint over them both if I wanted to, or I could select them instead. And so I'll just go ahead and choose the selection brush, let's say, which is a dumb brush, no special technology built into it. However, if I paint around a bicyclist, you can see the great thing about it is you can be pretty sloppy for one thing, and then you can fill in the interior. So it's pretty easy to use, really quick actually. And then I'll just paint around this woman, taking care not to paint him if I can avoid it. But if I do paint into the guy's sleeve, then I can alter option drag in order to paint that region away. And I can paint in a little extra. And then down here in the contextual taskbar, I would click on the remove button. Now it's automatically gonna create a new layer by the way, and it gets rid of those people like so. And so here's before and here's after. It's actually looking pretty darn good. The curb looks good over here on the right-hand side of the image and the people in the background have filled in quite nicely. Notice that the remove tool had to kind of invent new people. Did it not? Now, the thing about the remove tool is it does not give you the three variations that you get with generative fill. And so I'm gonna knock this down just a little bit. I'll give it three and a half stars, not too shabby. Now for a feature that was first introduced in late July early August to Photoshop beta as things stand right now, which is generative upscale. It allows you to increase the number of pixels inside of an image using, of course, AI. And so I'm going to start with an image that's not likely to be replicated ever, actually. This photograph of Buzz Aldrin captured by Neil Armstrong on the surface of the moon back in 1969. It, however, even though there weren't digital cameras, it has been digitized, but of course, and so if I were to zoom in here, you can see that the resolution is quite limited indeed. We have some very giant pixels right here. So I'll zoom out and I'll go up to the image menu and choose generative upscale. Again, Photoshop beta as things stand right now. I can switch the scale from 2X to 3X to 4X, but if I go to 4X for this image, I'm gonna be told, hey, Whoa, this is too big. The width or the height, neither of them can exceed 4,096 pixels. So jot down that value and cancel out. Make sure you're working with an independent layer so you can crop it non-destructively. Return to the image menu and choose the canvas size command. Make sure that you're working in pixels and that relative is turned off. And then just go ahead and dial in that value, 4,096 divided by four is what we're looking for. That takes us down to 1,024 pixels. So just go ahead and copy that value and paste it in for the height as well. Click OK and then ignore the error message, click proceed, and we end up with this result right here. And I wanna make sure that we can see the footprint, so I'll go ahead and move this guy up a little bit. Still have some headroom, that's nice. And now I'll return to the image menu and choose generative upscale once again. Switch to 4X, no problems this time around, and I will click Upscale. Now, this is a generative feature, so you need a live internet connection 
Photoshop or at least Adobe claims that it's not using your images for learning purposes. I doubt it's even uploading your images, by the way, for what it's worth. But we do get a nice comparative image. I'm going to get rid of the layer mask so that we can see things up close and personal. I'll go ahead and zoom in. And then now notice that the American flag looks pretty jagged and I'm going to turn this layer off for a moment so we can see how things compare to what would ha have happened if we had upscaled the image, upsampled that is the image using the image size command and by cubic interpolation. So that results in smoother stripes but they're more rounded as well. These are more accurate if a little more jagged, but where you can really tell the difference is in the visor. Notice this guy right here. That is the reflected Neil Armstrong. So if I turn off the 4X layer, you can see with bicubic interpolation, he ends up being a blob. Now he's better to find. So not perfect, but better, obviously. Same goes for the lunar landing module. It's quite blobby with bicubic and it looks nice with generative upscale. Now, if the fact things are a little bit jagged bothers you, then what I recommend you do is go to the filter menu, choose noise right here, and then try out median is usually your best bet for defeating the noise where this command is concerned. And a radius value of two pixels is gonna work out beautifully. So try that out. You can adjust that radius value as well if you like. And so by way of a star rating, this feature is absolutely great. In my opinion, it is bleeding edge, but it's not really the first example of generative upscale on the market. There have been other examples available. So I'm going to give this guy just a slightly mitigated four and a half stars. Now for another feature introduced in that same July, August time frame in Photoshop beta. Once again, this one's going to absolutely blow you away. Harmonize, which can actually change the lighting of a scene. So I'm going to start with a couple of images. Once again, from Dreams Time, I've got this pool background and I've got this outsize rubber duck as well. Now notice that the duck has pretty flat lighting. If anything, the light's coming down from above, whereas where the pool is concerned, the light's coming in pretty harshly from the left-hand side. So it's casting this big shadow right here. So in other words, a duck doesn't stand a chance of matching its background, even if we do a great job of masking it. So I'll just go ahead and use remove background. Once again, it's set to cloud. So it is, you know, a little bit generative, but the image does not look at home, however impeccably it may be masked, which is why you next want to click on Harmonize. This is another generative feature, so you do need a live internet connection. And it may take a little bit of extra time, by the way, but once it finishes, what a difference it makes. Notice these three variations they're all much better than what we were seeing before and we not only have better lighting so notice the duck actually matches its scene now i'll turn the original duck off because we don't need it but we do have totally new lighting and that's because the image has been entirely rewritten notice that this is a big generative object you can see that inside the layers panel if you were to shift click on the layer mask to turn it off then you would see that the background gets a little bit gummy and so it'd be nice if i could take this guy and upsample it by the way, increase its resolution. But if I were to click enhance detail, it does not take at this point in time. So we'll see if that changes in the future. But otherwise, this is absolutely amazing. Every single one of these versions of the duck has been relit and they all include reflections as well. I think I like that first one the best. And so I know it's going to sound absolutely ridiculous, but this one I am willing for now to give five stars. And just by way of a roundup, here are all 10 of the new features inside the summer version of Photoshop. So what do you think? Am I being too goofy about Harmonize? I mean, 
It's very beta at the moment, but it's just so promising. What do you think? What's your favorite? Comment below. And to learn all about Photoshop support for AVF and JPEG XL, join me at patreon.com slash I'm Deke McClelland. This is Deke Now.